Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 with the Horse Lords DLC. In our last episode, we have just declared an opportunistic war on this Kyrgyz revolt over here. And our vassal also has the, his own war against them for the other county. So I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen here. I think we may just have to let him siege this county. That should get them to 100% and he'll take it. Then we'll probably be able to piece them out for the other county immediately. Let's unpause and see if that's how this happens. He actually doesn't have a huge numbers advantage here. And he is attacking into the mountains, so this could be a difficult battle for him. Looks like he's going to win it, though. Our truce with our southern neighbors here is about to expire. I guess it's only a very short truce after we make them a tributary. Erratic infidel Kagan Asep um, outrageously refused to pay the extra tribute demanded by my steward. Oh dear. So his, or my opinion of him, goes down. Okay. Well, that's fine. I guess we see the tributary relation here in his diplomacy area. Okay. Makes sense. Well, he's still paying us the normal tribute, so we'll let him off for the moment. So I think we just have to wait for him to finish sieging this. My son Kadan has a tender and loving soul, trusting everyone in the castle. Uh, excuse me, we don't have castles. We are nomads. We hate them. With their big drafty walls and stuff. Um. Anyway, I fear he will get hurt someday. He can become kind. I think that's okay. Castles, indeed. Oh, and the revolt is over. Okay. So, I guess we still are in a conquest war. That's fine. Um. I suppose we'll just keep, uh, continue fighting this. We'll stay in our county. We're probably getting ticking war score. Uh, Sky, your favorite workhorse has taken his last gallop across the steppe and begun the eternal sleep. It is time to take your farewell of an old friend that has served you well. Oh no, goodbye, old friend. So we actually lose a substantial amount of monthly prestige for that. And also now I slightly regret saving the horse instead of my wife in that river. Oh well, goodbye, old friend. Yeah, we're up to 91% here, so that's fine. Kyrgyz? Um, another count of Kyrgyz. This is Vassal, I guess, has been called in to our conquest. Well, that's fine. And our Vassal has won his war for this county. Okay. We are at 99%, so we can probably... Not quite enforce demands yet. We'll see if he offers us peace. And we'll actually just split in half and take an army down here to fight this army if we can. And we will catch them. So not exactly an easy victory there, but we did win and it got us to 100%. So we'll enforce our demands. And now we have clans want more land again. Those greedy clans. Well, maybe what we do instead is create another clan because we are at two out of three maximum clans. So... Previously we split our clan because this was the only one available, but we should be able to um, we should be able to split our vassal clan now. And I guess we can absorb clans if we have too many. We also have the option to form a blood oath, which will make the other clan a staunch ally for as long as both rulers live. However, you can only have one other clan as your bl blood brothers. Okay, well good to know. Or declare a feud. 
which I'm not sure what that does, but maybe we'll find out later. For now though, we'll see what happens if we split them. It will lower their clan sentiment of us by minus 40, but other vassals will not mind. Okay. Well, uh, we apparently cannot give them our new county over here. We have to give them one from this area. Oh no, actually, this is... This is his counties we're choosing from, I see. Well, we'll give the new clan his new county. And then we'll maybe have to grant them one or two from over here also. He'll say no, which I guess means we're going to have to fight him. Okay, in that case... I'm going to wait just a minute here before taking that action. We'll get our armies back together. My son has a tender and loving soul, trusting everyone in the castle. Hey, don't get me started again. I fear he will get hurt someday. Uh, he can become kind also. Alright, so we, we have 3,000, the maximum of 3,250. Our vassal is much lower than that on troops, so I think we can fight him quite easily. So we'll split clan, give them this county. See what he says. A little worried about doing this because it will probably make us look weak to our neighbors. They might try to attack us. Just have to hope we get it over with quickly. So we are going to need to appoint a new commander because, of course, our vassal was a commander. And Ogodai here is going to be the best person for the job. So let's try and get in quickly and fight this army. Which we are not going to do. Try this instead. Still not going to catch him. Okay. Our daughter lacks a guardian. Uh, we'll just give her to some random person. It doesn't really matter. We can call in... Oh, our tributary. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sure. He's got 2,000 troops of his own. That's pretty substantial, actually. A large merchant caravan from distant lands has arrived at the gates of your stronghold. Their leader, a jovial man of massive girth, pleads with you in a strange accent to grant them shelter from the elements from the night. Yeah, sure. As evening falls, the fat merchant sits by the fire and regales you and the rest of the court with stories of his travels. His appetite seems insatiable, but as you do not wish to prove a poor host, you order your servants to bring in a second serving. Tell us more about this mythical realm of Hindustan. Well, I mean, I think we probably know about Hindustan. Maybe. There are mountains in the way, I guess. Dawn breaks and the caravan prepares to move on. The merchant insists on leaving you a gift as thanks for your great hospitality. He takes a terse command in a foreign language and a young man comes forward. This eunuch will serve you well, the merchant says. His loyalty to you, his new master, shall be beyond reproach. Sure, we'll accept. And we're off to hunt the Great White Bear again. Okay. Maybe we'll change our character focus once we're done with this war. Okay, we won the battle. I guess we'll leave some troops here to hold this county. Try and catch the rest of his army. Which we will not. bunch of people are arriving at my court, okay. And I'll leave 500 here because he has slightly worrying number of troops over there. Actually, it's only 255. We could probably take them with 250, but that's fine. 
And we're off to hunt the Great White Bear again. Okay, it seems like our tributary here is joining the fray. After many days of hard hunting and tracking, you have finally managed to trap the Great White Bear in a cul-de-sac between two rocks. The great animal is at your mercy. It looks like it looks at you with intelligent eyes. You are suddenly struck by its great beauty. You can say its head will adorn my wall. We gain 200 prestige. I'm a hunter, which gives us martial diplomacy. Pursuit plus 20, okay. Or we cannot slay such a noble animal, in which case we still get the prestige. Let's become a hunter. Now known as the hunter. All right then. So we definitely should change our focus. And let's go for rulership focus for the moment. My son lacks all passion and ambition, perfectly content with his lot in life. Uh, that's actually fine, assuming that he is going to be not our heir. So we're at 91%. Sieging this holding should get us up to 100 or thereabouts. Or, in fact, he'll just surrender immediately. Oh no, he just wants a white piece. Absolutely not. Under no circumstances. Okay. So we imprison him. That means we should be able to forcibly split the clan, I guess? So he can't say no because he's our prisoner. It reduces his sentiment by minus 40. We still need to give land to the clan. I guess we'll give a county to this new guy. Give him Ket. Now we... Again, stand to lose the title on succession, which is a little worrying, but we'll try to deal with that later. And we still need to give out a county. May as well give the new guy the other county over here. Which is Erkis. Alright then. So this guy is actually very happy with me, despite the fact that... Uh, we have fought and imprisoned him. I guess we can just release him. He can't afford a ransom. It does increase the opinion of our other vassals. Son of the Wolf. Okay, for some time now you have heard people at court gossiping about your son, al -Kidai. There are conversations that stop as you enter the room, words spoken in hushed voices behind your back, furtive glances as you walk by. With time, you have managed to deduce certain things. al seems to generally be the subject of either curiosity, fear, envy, or a combination of any of the above. The word that you most often hear repeated as you eavesdrop on the gossips is... Wolf. Indeed, just the other day you heard someone speak of a rumor that you've heard several times before, that his real mother was a wolf. We can say that we are glad they call our son a wolf. Uh, his opinion to be increases by 10. Or we can put a stop to this talk, gain 30 prestige. And uh, let's say that we're glad they call him a wolf. I mean, they're not wrong. Or at least it was very suspicious circumstances that we found him under. Okay, so title loss on succession to... I guess our new vassal Khan here. So I'm not entirely sure why that's happening. Um, according to Agnatic Nomad Succession, the son or brother with the most prestige is supposed to inherit, but prestigious clan leaders also stand a chance if their population is bigger than mine. So my population is 16k, and they have 7k and 1k respectively, which by my reading means that I should be inheriting. 
but apparently that's not the case. We also have more prestige than him, and a lot more than him. So I don't know, I guess we'll see what happens once there is a succession. The small spider makes my son squeal and run for cover. This has started to worry me. We will tell him that fear is the mind killer. And he'll lose the trait Craven and maybe even become brave. He didn't become brave, that's okay. This guy claims he would be a better court chaplain. Eh, uh, sure. I will allow it. Uh, we do have our court chaplain not doing anything right now, so let's see. I guess all of the land we've gained is Tengri, so no reason to send him to do anything there. I wonder if we can uh, send him to try and convert our Kagan tributary down here. Apparently we cannot, okay. And our vassals are Tengri as well. Um, oh, we can actually choose a new warhorse since our old one died. I think we can spare 20 gold for that. We go out into the herd to choose a strong and powerful warhorse. You look around with expert eyes and eventually spot a steed that stands out from the rest. It is strong and has a powerful bearing. You, as you mount your new steed, you feel certain that you have made the right choice. All that remains now is to give it a suitable name. What shall it be? We'll call it Lightning. Sounds pretty good. So that gives us back the plus 0.5 per month there. So actually we can definitely afford to build a few more horde units with the amount of prestige we're gaining. Or we could even spend some gold on one. I think we'll just build a couple with prestige and instead we'll spend some gold on some upgrades in our capital here. Perhaps some of the cheaper ones. We can increase our max population, increase morale of armies. More tech points. Or make the Bagatour Council extra morale of armies and military tech points. Now we can't build any of these. I guess we need a port or a major river. We need jungle or desert, okay. A uh, composite bow increases horse archer attack and horse archer offensive. That seems pretty good, though that is most of our gold. Let's increase our max population with this uh, gear crafter. Relatively cheap. And my wife is pregnant again, okay. Good news, I guess. Uh, my son Kadan is a charitable little rascal. He just gave his newest toy to the smith's son. I thought he was already charitable. Maybe not. We'll allow him to be charitable, though. A new bird has arrived to the, to the Mew, and a new book on the art of writing poetry is in the library. Well, we already became a falconer, so why don't we start reading the book this time? The book about poetry is really boring, it is filled with do's and do nots, and I just want to throw it out the window. So we can become depressed, or instead become an aspiring falconer, okay. We'll do that, even though we are already an actual falconer. And um, interestingly, also now that we control this county, we can raid our neighbours over here, so I think we'll probably go and do that. The important part of ruling a realm is learning how to delegate. This is something that you finally realized, and your stewardship has improved as a direct consequence. Great. Plus one stewardship. Actually, on second thoughts, maybe let us not raid these guys. But oh, this is actually the army of Kumania. So I guess they're at war. Uh, yes, it is actually Kumania that's attacked them. Which is kind of weird. Oh, they do have a border. Wow, okay.
uh, subjugation war, which uh, may give all of their land to Kumania. I'm not entirely sure what the consequences of that are. I guess we'll find out. I guess we can probably safely raid them in the meantime because Kumania will not be hostile to us, as far as I know. So let's get over to the border. You have taken some technology points, thank you. My prisoner is complaining about his dark cell. We'll let him rot. Uh, we'll actually ransom this one since we can. And we have another son who is ill. Okay. Got our ransom. Okay, let's toggle looter and get ready to go and raid. But we are going to have to wait until the next episode to do that because we're out of time for now. So thanks for watching and join me again then.